Hey everyone, welcome back to the Tech News. As you might have noticed, we've done a little bit of rebranding. This channel will now simply be called What's News? And we aim to bring together curated tech stories that should give you an idea of where we're moving in the future with regards to the tech space and everything around it. So without further ado, if I can just remind you to smash that like and subscribe button and maybe tell your friends about the channel, let's get into the Tech News. In today's episode, we have synthetic fuels made by Porsche, Denmark aiming to create islands in the North Sea, canines that are being used to train artificial intelligence to sense diseases, and the YouTube algorithm wreaking havoc on channels. All this and more in today's tech news. All right, first up in green technology, we have Porsche and their synthetic fuel. Porsche has been working for the past few years to develop a synthetic fuel that can be used as an alternative to your regular petrol that you use in your car today. Apparently, they've achieved some degree of success and they've managed to manufacture 130,000 liters of this stuff. Porsche claims that using their fuel is 85% cleaner than using the standard petrol that you get at your petrol bunk. They use a terminology called well-to-wheel emissions and what this means in the context of regular petrol is the entire supply chain process, that is to say the extraction of oil from the ground, refining, processing, transportation to your local distribution center or fuel station as you might call it, into your car and then being burnt in your car. That entire process has a certain amount of emissions that it achieves and apparently their fuel is 85% cleaner than traditional fossil fuels. Porsche also claims that this brings it pretty much in line with the manufacture and the usage of electric cars. And this is where it kind of breaks down a little bit because they're being a little bit unclear as to how they made that comparison between the fuel and the manufacture of a car. It's not entirely clear as to what they mean and it sounds like a little bit of PR talk if I'm being honest. But we did reach out to Porsche for clarifications and as of the time of recording this video, they have not responded to the channel. Porsche claims that they will be ramping up production from 130,000 litres to over half a million litres by 2026. But the way they've worded their press release leads us to believe that Porsche might be intending to make this fuel available primarily to their own customers. That is to say, possibly, if you have a Porsche that has an internal combustion engine and is not one of their new electric vehicle models, you could in the future possibly buy synthetic fuel from Porsche and feel a little better about yourself while you go roaring down at 9000 RPM down your local highway. Also in green energy today is Denmark. You see, Denmark's lawmakers have given the <clears throat> green signal. See what I did there? It's just terrible. To making a man-made island in the North Sea. This island is said to be about 80 kilometers off the coast of the mainland. And the idea is to make an island that serves as a hub for the 200 offshore wind turbines. The project is said to be the biggest construction project Denmark has ever embarked on and is supposed to cost around 34 billion US dollars. That includes the making of the island and the distribution infrastructure to transport that electricity to the mainland. The project will be done in three stages and in the first stage, Denmark will create an island that's 120,000 square meters in area and will be capable of generating 3 gigawatts of electric capacity. The aim is to extend the island to three times that size over a period of the three phases of the project and ultimately be able to generate 10 gigawatts of electricity. Denmark officials say that the idea is to be able to generate power for 300 million households, which means that this project will not only cater to Denmark's local electricity needs, but also to neighboring countries. Which neighboring countries were not mentioned, but to be fair, these are very early days and the project itself has a deadline of 2033, but experts on the matter say that that would be quite hard to achieve. Nonetheless, Denmark is committing to this direction and this comes on the back of announcements saying that they will seize all oil exploration in the North Sea and the fact that Denmark has committed to being completely carbon neutral by the year 2050. Next up in the field of biotech, man's furry little friend, dogs have long been able to sense out or sniff out diseases in human beings and they do this by smelling urine samples. Studies have shown that they have a very high level of accuracy when it comes to sniffing out certain diseases like prostate cancer, lung cancer and so on. 
Some researchers say even COVID-19 possibly. Well, the problem is that it takes a lot of time, effort and energy and not to mention money into training these dogs and they're not available as widely as we would like. Which is why scientists are aiming to develop technology that can do the same job but be miniaturized to the point where it fits into your cell phone and becomes a portable product. You can see how this might have a very wide reaching impact on society. So far scientists say that they have achieved a sensor technology that is 200 times as sensitive as a dog's nose but when it comes to actually interpreting the data they're nowhere close to being as good as our canine friends. Scientists are therefore now turning to artificial intelligence and hoping to train their artificial intelligence with machine learning to teach it to mimic what dogs do and hopefully create this technology in the near future. Meanwhile, canine unions all over the world are furiously discussing with their lawyers how they must take this issue up in what they see as a clear attack on doggy employment. In tech social, we're seeing the infamous YouTube algorithm wreaking its havoc once again on its domain. That's right, YouTube AI algorithm apparently has been banning chess channels. No one knows exactly why, but speculation is that because of the terminology in chess and the words used, the YouTube algorithm is picking up words and combinations of words such as black, white, attack, and threat and combining them together to... Wait a minute, what did I just do? I just... I literally said all those words together. Oh God. Okay, you know what? It's fine. Best case, nothing happens and I bring the news to you. Worst case, the YouTube algorithm picks it up and bans my channel. But, but that does mean YouTube algorithm recognizes us. And that's, let's face it, that hasn't happened with this channel yet. That's just, we need to, guys, smash that like button. Subscribe. Tell your friends. We bring the best tech news. Ask anyone. Everybody knows this. Nobody knows about the channel, but everybody knows this, nonetheless. Anyway, back to the tech news. So the speculation is that the YouTube algorithm is putting these words together and assuming that it might be racial content. Now, thankfully, YouTube itself works on both human intervention as well as its AI algorithm. And because of that, the chess channels have been reinstated to normalcy. But to test this theory, two researchers actually used a similar artificial intelligence software designed to detect racist content and they fed it 680,000 comments from two different chess channels. What they found was the AI software actually flagged 82% of those comments as racist, thus lending some credence to the theory that the algorithm that YouTube employs also might be working on similar lines. Also in tech social is the United States of America. The US imports more than 80% of its semiconductors and over 90% of its medical products from China and they know and realize this. So recently they've passed an order to try and establish these supply chains with countries like South Korea, Japan, Taiwan and also certain Asia Pacific economies like Australia. The idea being to create supply chains that are less vulnerable to geopolitical changes and trade wars in the future and to create supply chains that will ensure the manufacture of complementary products so that imports and exports go both ways at a more equitable rate and that these supply chains will be focused at least initially on semiconductor technology, rare earth materials, uh, electric vehicle battery production and medical products. Going forward, of course, this portfolio will be expanded. In a similar vein, India has also announced $1 billion in incentives to try and attract tech companies to manufacture goods in India, specifically electronic items such as tablets, smartphones and laptops. Apparently, a rising middle class in India has increased appetite for these electronics and given that India mostly exports these, quite a lot of it from China, they want to achieve a certain amount of independence and they want to achieve a certain level of manufacturing hub activity in India. The Ministry of IT says this $1 billion in incentives will go a long way towards providing direct and indirect employment for over 180,000 people and also create a manufacturing capacity to the point where they might be able to start exporting by 2025. And those are the most interesting tech news stories that we have for you today. We'll come back with more in just a few short days and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.